Hello guys and welcome to my new video and today we're going to be looking at the healer balance so far in Dragonflight Season 2. We're going to be looking at Mythic Plus, we're going to be looking at Mythic Rating, Heroic Rating, Race the World First. We're going to have State of Healers so far in this patch. And like many of the videos I need to do a bit of a disclaimer because the biggest differentiating factor between a lot of the healing classes right now is going to be have you got your tier set? There's going to be a lot of people who are still running the old tier set, some people are running the new two set, again some people are running the new four set and that is going to be a big big difference between healer A and healer B because the factor or the power of tier set is going to play a significant part in whether that healer is going to provide a lot of HPS or a lot of utility or just be picked in Mythic content so we're going to try and talk about this but let's go and start off with mythic rating here you can see this is the mythic rating again mythic aberus this is the hps shards hps shards don't show damage reduction cooldowns a lot of the classes here provide damage reduction it doesn't get replicated here or shown so hps shards big pinch of salt another big pinch of salt is the fact that right now you're seeing restoration druids doing a lot of hps but you don't know how many of these healers have two set bonuses four set bonuses for example you could have Restoration Judas running the Season 1 2-set bonus, which is pretty good in terms of HPS, and maybe they only have Season 2 2-set bonus as well, and they're doing mix and match type of thing, and that can work really well for Restoration Judas because it just provides a flat amount of HPS increase because it's relatively easy to calculate and things like that. Now, other healers, for example, if you're running old 2-set bonus and, two, and new 2-set bonus, they can't really do, how do I say, it's not as clear cut. For example, Preservation of Ogre, old tier set bonus is all about reversion, and the new two set bonus is all about Spirit Bloom and ramping using Spirit Bloom, which they kind of go against each other. So it's not the best representation. I should wait at least a week or two in order, probably two weeks, and then I could assume that the large amount of sample size here would have four set bonus, and you could really say to yourself, hey, these healers are doing this much. This is the pure HPS healer right now, or the king HPS healer, because Restoration Jude is doing really well in terms of pure HPS. Evoker is, has climbed so much in the last two days in pure HPS. I think in another week or two, I think Evoker is going to climb even more because I felt that they would gain the most in terms of jumping from Season 1 tier set bonus to Season 2 tier set bonus because Season 1 4 set bonus for Evokers was not that great in terms of pure HPS. It was great in Mythicalus, but it wasn't great in Raids. You can see Holy Priest. Holy Priest is probably actually... The number one healer right now in raids, we'll talk about Race the World first in terms of meta, in terms of what was really, really popular. Wrestle Shaman is doing really well, I think they can provide a lot of utility, they can provide a lot of HPS, the kings of Mythic Plus content. We'll talk about Mythic Plus, don't worry about this. Holy Paladin, really, really good, especially because their damage reduction cooldown in terms of Aura Mastery or Devo Aura with Aura Mastery, it's not showing up here, in the similar way that Discipline Priest Barrier is not being shown up here. And Mystery Monks are a little bit down lower in terms of HPS, but again, Give it a week or two once every healer gets to pick up their 4 set bonus. Because, for example, if Miss Weaver's right now only using the 2 set bonus, the new 2 set bonus, it basically gives you mana. You need to get that 4 set bonus to really see the true potential of Mist Weaver Monk. As an example, I've been able to pick up the 4 set bonus for my Preservation of Ochre, and a lot of people have been asking me why I'm not playing my Wrestle Shaman. I am, but my guild has asked me to main Preservation of Ochre, and I'm basically doing what the guild asked me. And my experiences with the 4 set for Preservation of Ochre has been really, really good. I've been doing good HPS numbers. The playstyle has completely changed for Evoker if you have the 2 set bonus and then you manage to pick up the 4 set bonus. But the 2 set bonus changes how you approach Mythic Raiding and even Mythic Plus to some extent because Spirit Bloom provides so much burst healing potential on top of a hot that he applies. It feels very, very different. And now let's move on to Heroic Aberus charts. And again, this is for people who might be looking to step into mythic but they want to see which healer is doing well in heroic and there's a big big difference you can see here we're using 75 percentile 75 percentile if you're playing your healer above average you might see numbers like this they're very different from mythic this is the mythic version in terms of 75 percentile and this is the heroic version why is that because in large raids in mythic you have 20 man groups in heroic you most likely will have something like close to 30 people the more people you have the classes that have better healing cooldowns, things like Rewind, which is absolutely insane in large groups. Things like Salvation for Holy Priest, things like Divine Hymn for Holy Priest. They have multiple healing cooldowns that they can use in a large raid group. And if you use them properly, again, you're going to see insane HPS values. So if you're someone who's progressing heroic raiding and you don't have a lot of people in your raid group, you're probably not going to pass really well. If you have a lot of people in your raid group, healers 
that have a lot of healing cooldowns are going to be really, really strong. Resto Shaman is also doing pretty well because they have healing tide. They have a lot of ways to combine your Cloudburst totem with things like Ancestral Guidance, things like Ascendance. You can you can play to Restoration Shaman strengths in large raid groups as well. But in my eyes, the kings of HPS in heroic large group content is going to be Holy Priest with the big cooldowns and Preservation of Ochre with Rewind. On the flip side, if you're someone who's playing these healers and you mess up your big raid cooldowns, you're never going to pass because majority of, of your healing is going to be coming from those healing cooldowns. That's the biggest difference between heroic raiding and mythic raiding is how you optimize those healing cooldowns because you have larger group sizes and you can see which healers in heroic right now are performing better. And I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. And now a quick look at Race to World First. I don't want to talk too much about this here because Race to World First only affects a very small percentage of World of Warcraft population. But it's interesting to see how the meta or healing meta has solidified in Mythic Aberus in terms of rate progression. So let's look at what top end guilds we're using. And the meta is quite simple. So you can see here this is Liquid in terms of the last raid boss. The meta is basically two Holy Priests, a Holy Paladin and whatever healer you want to bring. So this is Liquid right now. Two Holy Priests were being used for a lot of other top-end guilds. And that is mainly because I this is the Mythic HPS chance. Because I think Holy, Holy Priest is not by a mile the best HPS healer. They provide... You can see the general consensus of Mythic rating is that most healers are relatively close in terms of pure HPS. And when most healers are relatively close in terms of pure HPS, it always tends to be the healers that provide power infusion. We had this in Sepulchre and things like that. So I'm trying to say that generally speaking, a lot of times when healers provide a similar amount of HPS, healers that provide utility, especially power infusion, tend to kind of gravitate to the top. We've seen this in previous expansions. Again, you can say this Priest also provides power infusion, but this Priest HPS is probably not the same as Holy Priest unless you count in Barrier, which again, you cannot do that in Warcraft Logs. If you have a really good Dismal Priest, you can probably do really, really well. But generally speaking, Holy Priest will provide really good HPS. They'll provide Power Infusion, which again, Power Infusion is insanely strong because look at Liquid and top end guild composition. They're going to have multiple, multiple Warlocks. Warlocks are really good. So if you have a tier where every healer providing similar HPS, and then you have really good Power Infusion targets in terms of Warlocks and things like that, and few other classes, you are going to have additional value to Power Infusion. And on top of that, Holy Priests don't provide damage reduction cooldown, but they provide pseudo damage reduction cooldown with Symbol of Hope. Symbol of Hope is going to reduce the defensives of your group. If you can align it properly, that can mean a lot of damage reduction or providing a lot of damage reduction indirectly through Symbol of Hope. And that can be, again, a lot of people, top end guilds were saying it was working really well. They were able to align it properly. And this is where you see Liquid running double Holy Priest. You can see Echo running double Holy Priest. You can see Method running double Holy Priest. And Holy Priest just end up being one of the best healers right now because everyone's HPS is relatively equal. But Holy Priest or Priest in general provide Power and Fusion aid, and they provide Symbol of Hope, which is very, very strong. A lot of guilds were also running Holy Paladin. Holy Paladin was actually nerfed right before the raid came out. Holy Paladin, in terms of pure HPS, they might not be top HPS, but they provide damage to the cooldown to True Diva Aura with Aura Mastery, which. If you're able to see that in Warcraft Logs, it would look very... Holy Paladins would be a lot higher. So Holy Paladins, not only they provide good passive damage, they also provide damage reduction, they also provide good healing, and they were... Again, they were nerfed before this because I'm sure there would have been a lot of top-end guilds would have run multiple Holy Paladins if the nerf didn't happen. Again, Holy Paladins were looking really, really good. But you also have to remember, in terms of Vault of Incarnate, there is a big, how do you say, risk factor when you're trying to stack multiple priests because a lot of people didn't know what Sacred was going to be like. Is it going to be movement? Because you have to remember, Liquid was actually running multiple priests in Vault of Incarnate and then they came about to Mythic Razaget and Mythic Razaget was like, hey, priests, one of the most immobile classes in the game, cannot really bypass phase one without something like a vocal rescue without time spiral and things like that and there is a factor of how to say almost gambling when you're trying to stack priests because maybe mythic sacred was going to be somewhat similar to that but it did not end up being like that and again the value of preservation of vocals end up falling because i think the value of preservation of vocals was relatively tied to the last boss in terms of maybe there's going to be some movement maybe you need time spiral maybe you need rescues again it didn't turn out like that and preservation of vocal kind of fell down in terms of do you need to have a preservation of vocal in your raid most likely not this tier but then when you go to liquid composition again you, you saw restoration jutes and people might be like restoration jutes top hps and all that there is a reason why they brought them purely again liquid brought rest of jute because all the other jutes specs specifically balanced jutes were not good there's not a single jute in the raid except for rest of jute and they need that mark of the wild 
So this was purely like a utility pick. I'm not saying Jews are not doing bad. Jews were actually buffed by Blizzard before the raid came out by a couple of percent in terms of their healing because Blizzard saw that a lot of the guilds might not actually bring rest of Jews. So this is why when people look at pure HPS charts, pure HPS charts don't mean anything in high end progression because you have to do you have to bring multiple different things. So Liquid did end up going with Restoration Jude because of the Mark of the Wild. In terms of Echo, they did go with, again, we saw Mystery of Monk, which is interesting because they had multiple monks in the raid already. So that was pretty interesting in terms of bringing Miss Weaver. And again, I think Miss Weavers are doing pretty well. If you're playing Miss Weaver, you're probably the one of the five people that actually play Monk right now. But I think they're really interesting. I think the play style has changed up quite a bit in terms of, in terms of talent choices. And Method ended up bringing a Restoration Shaman. And again, you're basically bringing Double Holy Priest Holy Paladin, and then whatever healer you want to bring. I think Rest of Shaman is more than capable. Again, the general consensus of raiding in terms of mythic raiding, in terms of heroic raiding charts, play whichever healer you enjoy the most. These charts are going to change in terms of your HPS because there's going to be more people picking up four sets. Let's go and look at mythic plus. Now let's look at mythic plus in terms of popularity, and we're going to use subcreation data again. What you see on the screen is basically for this week, fortified and tagging postering in terms of a lot of runs in terms of from 16 to 25. And again, there's a big disclaimer. Sub creation data or the way to do the tier list is it, it can be viewed as extremely flawed. There's actually been documentation that's been published in the recent weeks or months in terms of leading up to season two in terms of how sub creation tier lists are wrong and things like that. No tier list is actually again, this is using real play information, but no tier list is going to be foolproof. I think there's a lot of issues with this tier list. I think there's a lot of how do you say? I think the healer balance, even in Mythic Plus, is relatively good. I think I do think Restoration Shaman is probably the top tier Mythic Plus healer right now, and that is probably purely because of damage. I think the amount of DPS you can provide as Restoration Shaman is actually kind of insane. You can still provide a good amount of healing, you have good utility, and you provide Bloodlust. But the main differentiating factor between Restoration Shaman and a lot of these healers is they provide Bloodlust and they have a lot of DPS. But another kind of complication here, there has been a lot of suggestions for patch 10.15 where Blizzard might be looking at adjusting things like Ancestral Guidance, might maybe adjusting things like Acid Rain. So... I would not be surprised if Resto Shaman is going to receive a bit of a slap on the wrist in terms of the amount of DPS they're providing, possibly the amount of healing they're providing as well, because I do think Restoration Shaman is going to be viewed as a top tier healer, but not by a huge significant margin, because you have to remember, Season 2 Mythic Plus, right now, if you're playing a healer, you're probably healing your butt off. There is so much healing that you need to do because most of the groups don't know what's going on. They're taking avoidable damage. You're still learning fights. You might not have optimal gear. You might not have tier sets. You're probably spending most of your time healing and the healing checks are absolutely insane, especially in the first couple of days. But Blizzard is nerfing healing checks. Everyone's getting more gear. Everyone is going to learn dungeons and then all of a sudden that healing requirement is going to significantly fall. So right now, for example, Restoration Jude is really strong because it can provide so much pure HPS. But later down the line, when you need, how do I say, the healing checks are going to fall, everyone's going to learn the dungeons. People are going to be look, looking towards healers that provide the most damage. And in my eyes, that's most likely going to be Restoration Shaman, possibly Dismant Priest when you counter in Power Infusion. So that's something to consider right now. So right now, I genuinely believe every single healer, you don't DPS, or priority is not to DPS, priority is to heal and to, to get those 20 keys done. Later down the line, it's going to be all about optimizing DPS. Healers are going to pick up DPS trinkets and things like that. And I genuinely believe that Restoration Shaman is probably going to be somewhere there. I think... This win priest is going to do really, really well because power infusion by itself is going to be really nice. I think preservation of Ochre, I think the fact that Evoker is losing so much damage, and I am playing Evoker a lot, you're losing so much damage by losing your season one forced bonus by not having your staff anymore. We'll have to wait for the legendary. So that's something to come come about for preservation of Ochre. But you're losing a lot of DPS. That's something to consider. I think Holy Paladin could easily be. I think all of these healers could easily be 8 here right now. And I did this before in terms of ranking. I think Holy Paladin can climb. I think Rest of Jude is definitely deserving to be 8 here. I think Rest of Jude can still provide good damage, good healing, and provides Mark of the Wild. And I think Miss Weaver is really not that bad that a lot of people might consider it. In terms of popularity, we can look at things like Rated.io information in terms of how many healers are doing tw keys 20 and up. And you can see here Restoration Shaman is very, very popular right now. You see Rest of Jude is very popular. You can see Preservation Vocals are still there as well. You can see this is kind of like the the top three healers in terms of the most popular healers that are doing 20 and no keys. You can see Holy Pal. You can see this one Priest as well climbing. I don't think Holy Priest is all that bad because a lot of the times if you don't know the dungeon, it can be very, very decent and very few people playing Mystery Monks. That's not a big surprise at all. Mystery Monks are by far the, by far the least played class in the game out there. But 
general consensus is that right now you can pretty much play any healer because you just need healing requirements and if you just need to do those 20 keys don't worry you can do 20 keys with any healer right now for the people who are looking to push really really high-end keys restoration shaman is most likely going to be a top healer because purely off the damage you're doing but restoration shaman in my eyes would be very lucky to not get nerfed in the next patch or so because blizzard has already announced certain changes so i'm expecting resto shaman nerfs specifically to their damage in the next again patches and things like that and i think that's going to bring them down to a more to a more level of, of other healers because damage is the biggest differentiating factor right now besides bringing bloodlust but guys let me know how you feel about this video which healer are you maining right now which healer are you having the most fun with which dungeon or there is so many healing checks right now which dungeon has the best healing check or the or the biggest healing check that you dread doing or you love doing because you love healing guys let me know let me know how you feel about healer balance in mythic plus in raids in mythic raiding in heroic raiding in race to world first let me know and i'll see you in my next video